Good morning, everybody. Uh, you know, I started this series a week ago telling the story of Lent and starting in the Garden of Eden. We talked about the fact that there were two trees in the garden and Adam and Eve had access, they were given access to the tree of life. And the tree of life, we understood, is actually Jesus himself. He is the one in whom we need to have a relationship in order to have life. So they were allowed to eat from this tree and as a result, they would have life and never know death. But when they chose to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what happened was they lost their right to eat from the tree of life anymore. You see, the knowledge of evil includes the experience of death. And if you include the experience of death, you can't be eating from the tree of life anymore. So a great barrier was erected between them and God, between them and Jesus, the true vine, the great giver of life. And in that moment, when they made that decision, all mankind was hopelessly separated from Jesus as well. Condemned to an existence that includes all kinds of evil that, that we see all the time. Sickness, tragedy, pain, death. We were locked in shackles and put in a prison whose doors we could never hope to open. And God could have left us there. God could have said they deserve it. They made that choice. They rebelled. They didn't want the goodness. I gave them the garden, and they didn't, they didn't want it. But instead, he created three keys to allow us to unlock our chains. And Paul talks about these three keys in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. He says, now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. Those are the three keys, and I'm going to be talking about each one of the keys over the next three weeks. We're going to start by looking at Romans 5. Uh, over these three weeks, we're going to look at uh, the first eight verses, but I'm just going to read the first two verses today. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we exult in the hope of the glory of God. Faith is the first key. Paul says here that we have been justified by faith. But you know what? That key did not always work. There was a time when faith would not open the door. Have you ever gone to a hotel and they give you an electronic key card for, for the door that you're going to get into your room? And you may have the key card in your hand, but until they program that card to unlock the door, it doesn't work. It's just a piece of plastic doesn't do anything. Paul says in Galatians that Abraham had faith and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. In other words, Abraham had the key, but it didn't work when Abraham was alive. But when Jesus came, Jesus activated that key and Abraham's faith is now reckoned to him as righteousness because of Jesus. See, Jesus, the tree of life himself, went to the cross in order to create a path for lost humanity to have peace with God again. And once he does that, it's beautiful. He says he escorts us. He takes us right into the throne room of God and introduces us like honored guests entering a grand ballroom, like those old you know, stories you'd see of people coming into huge events and being announced as if they were guests of honor. And the key to this grace in which we stand with that honor is faith. Faith was always the key, but only when Jesus activated the lock did the key become affected, effective. So now we exult in the hope of the glory of God. So the story of Lent starts in the garden. Adam and Eve didn't realize their choice would invite evil and death into the world and lock us all in a prison from which we would never escape. But the story continues with the willingness of our loving God to give everything, including the life of his only beloved son, to provide an avenue of escape. Let me close with this thought. Sometimes I think we can have the tendency to think faith is our choice. That faith is something we have done that is worthwhile. Or that we are giving to God. God, I'm giving you my faith. I'm, I'm giving you my trust. But friends, we must realize that faith is a gift that we only have the potential to receive 
because Jesus purchased it at the price of his own blood. Faith is a gift God has given us the opportunity to have. So as you pray today, thank God for the first key that he has promised that can unshackle your life and rest in the peace that you can now have with God as a result. Consider how your life can become a tool for God to use in sharing that key with others who maybe need to be set free by Jesus themselves. God bless you all and have a wonderful week.